Hello and welcome to a new video on an attempted proof of the Riemann Hypothesis Part 5. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. First things first, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And now on to the video. Previously, we derived uh, theta bar of xn, and we said it was the asymptotic expanse of uh, this mid tog left there function uh, statement right here. And its asymptotic uh, expanse is uh, x dx. You have uh, this term right here minus uh, two divided by n, and you have the x dx, x to the minus n. And I forgot to mention in the last video that there is an r not equals to zero here, uh, because that is essentially this term right here. So this is just you know pulled out, All right? And uh, let's see, I also forgot an x dx on the last video, on the last, uh, this last sum series, okay? Because they're all shifted, okay? They all have, shift operators. Okay. And uh, last little correction, uh, previously in the last video, I said 3.3.7 was sine beta. It's actually supposed to be sine beta pi. Uh, luckily, this is not a fatal error. So if you reevaluate everything with just uh, sine uh, beta pi, actually everything works out just the same. You just have to add a uh, pi right here. And because in this one, you had sine of zero, uh, it was totally okay because zero times pi is still zero. So not a fatal error, uh, but definitely uh, definitely needed to be uh, corrected, especially for this next part. All right, so we have this uh, big uh, term here and we'd like to unpack it, so to speak. We'd like to do something with it. So our goal is to take uh, this term and uh, bring it down to uh, this right here, okay? So let's do that. Let's take the exponential form of cosine x, and we're gonna say, look, x of a is uh, th this term right here, and we're gonna take this term, we're gonna plop it in right here, we're gonna take this term, plop it in right here, and this is uh, the result, okay? This is what we get, this line right here. Now we can use uh, these two identities because we're multiplying uh, these exponentials together, the exponents can be added together. And when you add the exponents together, you have what? X e to the uh, i pi, and then you have your terms in here. Okay, so we do that for the plus and the minus. This is just uh, Euler identity, you know, very, uh, you know, uh, pre-calculus kind of stuff. Very cool. All right, so when we have all of these, uh, we can put the whole thing together and uh, we can say one half uh, all times uh, exp. Exp is the same as e to the x. We write it this way because we do not want to have uh, like a double exponent. Okay, so e to the x uh, times e to the i pi, you have your terms plus what? e to the x uh, times e to the negative i pi, your terms right here. Okay, this is very, very fun. I mean, I think this is probably one of the more accessible parts of the proof uh, to a wide variety of people because a lot of people have seen uh, cosines and uh, you know, sines and all this kind of stuff being put together in the Euler identity. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty well known. All right, so we're gonna flip the board and we're gonna talk about how uh, when we put this into here, magic happens. All right, so let me flip the board. All right, here we go. So we have our theta bar of uh, xn. And we've just written it all out right here. I mean, everything is just written out. And because we had that one half, that two disappears. So we have uh, a negative one divided by n. I mean, this is just this is just super cool. I mean, we can we can do so much with this. In my personal opinion, this is going to be uh, a lot of fun. And this should be uh, x. Sorry, it should be an x. Okay. So we say x dx is asymptotic uh, to this mid tog left function, asymptotic to uh, theta bar of xn. And our goal is to find uh, the, gener the exponential generating function of theta bar uh, of xn, okay? So we essentially want to find the generating function of all of this stuff. The exponential generating function, I should say. And when we do that, what we can do is say, look, uh, here is our, uh, you know, version of things uh, with the circle method, integral zero to one, you have your e to the x in there, 
comma n, then we have e to the negative 2 pi i x m uh, dx. It's going to equal a sub m divided by m factorial, and we're very, very interested in a sub m. We are very, very interested in a sub m. Uh, another way we could also do this is kind of just solve for a sub m and just solve the exponential at the very end, but that's, that's in the future. <laughs> so uh, what does a sub m depend on? It depends on these uh, n's right here. Okay, So these are going to be our kind of uh, the n, this n uh, here. And I actually really put this as capital M because we're using this down here. Uh, M. These are going to be kind of like uh, tuning constants, so to speak. All right, so hopefully you're enjoying these videos. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff, and I will see you in the next video.